Hey everybody, Parallel here, and welcome back to Star Trek Online. It is time to continue my playthrough of the new Jem'Hadar faction. I just completed the Jem'Hadar tutorial mission, slash introductory mission, I wouldn't really call it a tutorial. But uh, now that that is completed, I have access to the brand new episodes that were released with Victory's Life. So there are six total new episodes with the expansion. And I will be playing through the first of those episodes, which is called Storm Clouds Gather. However, before I jump into the episode, I wanted to uh, mention a few things because I have been grinding a little bit off screen to work on some uh, starship traits. So I did actually get up to level 65 and I thought some people might be interested to see what are the rewards along the way. And uh, also there are a couple other quick topics as well, like the... Um, some comments I was reading on some previous videos I wanted to talk about, and uh, yeah, and I made a couple small adju adjustments to the uh, sh uh, build that I put together for the bug ship. If you saw my previous video, I actually went through kind of throwing together kind of a starter build for the bug ship. So I will talk about all those right now, but one thing you might see, my character, he's, he's, uh, Herc's not feeling so good right now. He's a little bit groggy. You may have seen a lot of Jem'Hadar walking around with this animation, and I'm not sure if most people have realized this, but uh, probably people have by now, but if a Jem'Hadar has not had their Ketracel White in a certain amount of time, they go into this uh, groggy animation. I guess they're uh, suffering from withdrawal here, and they get this little debuff up here called Ketracel White Hunger. And I thought that was kind of a funny little touch. When I was first saw my character doing this, I was a little bit confused. I'm like, that's not my stance that I selected. So I thought it was a nice little touch from Cryptic there to put a little uh, sort of withdrawal animation on the Gemadar. So I kind of came here to Sick Bay in Deep Space Nine. I thought maybe uh, Bashir would be here to help me out, but uh, nope. I guess I'll just have to put in my own Ketracel White. So yeah, all you have to do is just click and use some, and then boom, there you go, and uh, you get your boost, and then. Uh, I guess after a certain period of time, I'm not sure, it might be like a couple hours or so, then you'll go back into that withdrawal state. So I thought that was pretty funny. I thought I'd mention that in case anyone was curious why, you know, if they're seeing all these Gemadar, uh, you know, running around uh, with that groggy animation, that's what's causing it. So yeah, they need their white. So anyway, yeah, so I, I have been grinding. Um, and I made a few small adjustments to my build, nothing major, but I just wanted to mention them because I did go into a lot of detail in the previous video, and if anyone is interested, um, I did upgrade the space set up to Mark 14, um, just because as I was grinding some of the other ships, I was feeling very squishy, so I wanted to get my shield up a little bit. And uh, I didn't upgrade the rarity. Upgrading the rarity takes way too much uh, you know, upgrade uh, tech upgrades, so I'll be waiting for the tech upgrade weekend to do any, any of that But for now, I just wanted to get them up to mark 14 just to help out make me a little less squishy um, And one major thing that I forgot to mention in that video was there is a console that you guys need to get your hands on If you are of the KDF faction and that is this console right here This is a must if you are KDF you can buy this on the exchange for like under 10 million and this is literally one of the best consoles in the game, and I can't believe I totally forgot to mention this in the previous video, but this is called the DPRM for short, uh, Dynamic Power Redistributor Module. This is one of the, I mean, this is a meta console. I mean, all the top DPS builds are using this because it is quite potent. It's got good passives with a damage resistance and a little bit of directed energy damage, but the clicky is fantastic. It gives you a huge, like 40% um, bonus damage, which is category two damage bonus, and then um, a lot of resistance rating and hull regen. But you have to keep your health above 80%, but it lasts for 20 seconds. So that's a massive buff for 20 seconds. And all you have to do is keep your health high. And if you combine it with the uh, protomatter field projector, which I did show in the build last time, that's very easy to keep your health above 80% and get that massive damage bonus for 20 seconds. So. Don't forget about this console. If you are a Fed, well, you're a little bit out of luck. If you chose the Federation side, you are going to have to get your hands on the uh, Atlas um, Cruiser in order to be able to get this console, and that's about 300 million. So, if you are with Fed, you have to pay 300 million. If you're KDF, you pay about eight or nine million. So, 
and maybe even less if they're cheaper now. So yeah, that's something I just wanted to mention. Um, and uh, not much else has changed here other than those, yeah, a couple little upgrades up to Mark 14 and throwing in that DPRM. Otherwise, everything is pretty much the same. Now, I did grind to get a few Starship traits. I mentioned these traits in the previous video that I are very, very good for Cannon Scatter Volley build. And um, I do want to grind those out just to at least have some decent traits in my uh, Starship traits here. So that is the uh, Emergency Weapon Cycle from the uh, Tier 6 Battle Cruiser, and then the uh, Withering Barrage from the Core. If, uh, if uh, yeah, the core. If you're on the KDF side, and it's from the, uh, is it the uh, Valiant on the Federation side? It's from the faction escort or uh, cross faction escort bundle. What is it? Yeah, the Valiant. Okay, I had it right. Um, so yeah, I did grind those two out because those are critical to the build. Um, those really improve your performance with a cannon scatter volley. So. Just wanted to mention that as well. So that's what I changed about the build, and not a whole lot, but uh, just wanted to give everyone a little update. Now I did, while I was grinding to get those starship traits, I basically made it all the way to 65. Um, in fact, there was something odd. It seemed to be taking a lot longer to grind uh, starship mastery. Um, there's something weird going on, and there's even a thread on Reddit about starship mastery possibly being nerfed. I don't know if it was nerfed or if there, it might just be bugged because there seems to be some weird kind of scaling going on now with the level 65 cap where things are getting scaled down. I wonder if that's screwing with the mastery XP. Like, because that only, you only get that from kills and a lot of things are just giving like almost no XP from kills. So I'm a little bit worried about that. I hope that gets fixed because it was a lot more of a grind to get mastery up now. It was so much of a grind that I made it all the way to 65. So I did want to quickly show what do you get from getting to 65. So, um, and I'll show all of these, uh, some of these in combat here, because one of them is an ability, but um, the first thing you get is the uh, Elite uh, First Starship Requisition Token. This is great for new players. For Geminar, it's not so important, because the Geminar already start with a Tier 5 U bug ship. And, um, but for if you don't have a tier 5 ship yet, you can use this token, you go to the shipyard and talk with the, the requisitions officer, and uh, you can use that token to get yourself a tier 5 U ship. Um, for your, I think it's for your faction, so I'm not quite sure, it's not a huge selection of ships you can get with that, but um, yeah, go over here to acquire ships, and you should see sh some ships that you can get... Like here, like uh, you could actually get a car fee if you wanted. See how it's here, he has this, this little uh, token, Starship Requisition token. So you can get that now for free as a free-to-play character. That's a really awesome reward. Um, there might be a couple, a couple other ships that you can get, uh, that, but that's one of them there. Um, level 62, you get uh, any single bridge officer specialization manual. And again, this is actually not as uh, needed for Jemadar because the... Well, if you have the Vanguard pack anyway, because the bridge officers you get with the Vanguard pack actually start with all the specializations. But uh, what you actually, if you do need some specializations, this is a nice tr uh, reward because it gives you this little box right here. And you can open that box and you can select a specialization um, qualification. So you can train a bridge officer in that specialization. Um, I'm probably gonna go with, I guess with, um, I'm thinking Miracle Worker or Temporal. I'll go with Miracle Worker. Unfortunately, it is, I believe, character bound. Yes, it is character bound, so you have to do it on you know each character to get this. Um, so that is the reward at 62. Um, the uh, 63 reward is a new captain ability. Um, and since I'm a tactical character, I'll be able to show this new tactical ability, which is Vulnerability Sweep, uh, Assessment Sweep. This is actually very nice. It's very similar to the Science Ability uh, Sensor Scan, which is very good. It's like an AoE debuff to resistance, and it'll make it do more damage to the target that it hits and the area around that target. Um, the Engineering one is Intrusive Energy Redirection, 
I haven't really tested this one out much on my engineer yet, so, but it looks like a little bit uh, lackluster. Uh, I need to test it a little bit more though. Um, Co-opt energy weapons is is interesting, but it has such a short range and a short duration that it's not very widely useful. It can be slightly useful in some situations because basically it'll give you a large heal when you take energy weapon damage, but it only lasts for five seconds. So it's like it will heal you very quickly for five seconds, but that's about it. Um, and they and everything that's hitting you has to be really close range, like three kilometers. So those are the new captain traits, uh, captain abilities. I will be able to show that first one, the vulnerab uh, vulnerability assessment sweep in the gameplay today. Um, the 64 one is this Gamma Quadrant Duty Officer cadre. And this one's actually pretty cool because it, give you this, it gives this box right here. I haven't opened it yet, but I believe one of the... I'll just go ahead and open it. So you get three duty officers. One is purple quality and then two blues. And the purple one is... Uh, let me pull them up here in the roster. Let's just go to recently acquired. So here they are. Here's what you get. Um, the purple one is actually kind of cool. This is a good uh, doff that you, uh, if you are a science character or if you're running gravity well, um, I highly recommend this doff because this has the chance to proc uh, an after effect gravity well um, and potentially multiple gravity wells. So it's actually a really nice doff if you are running a exotic psi damage or running gravity well for a control X build. It's a very good doff. Additional gravity wells are very good. Um, then these other two, you get an energy weapons officer. It only reduces the recharge time for subsystem targeting attacks. Not particularly great. And a diplomat, oh, that's a uh, blue quality. So that's what you get from that officer cadre. And then the final reward when you get 65 is actually the new admiralty card, which, uh, do I have it here? It's right here, the CUV Tain. I'm assuming it's named after Nabran Tain, which is Garrick's father. And um, pretty nice card, it is epic quality card, and you get uh, 66 engineering, 29 tech, and 40 science, and it gives you 2.5x critical rating from an event. So if you have an event uh, on that mission that gives you crit rating, this would be a good ship to slot. And it's a pretty good, good balanced ship. I mean, you got 40 psi and 66 engineering, so it's good for uh, filling out your um, missions. All right, so those are the level 65 rewards. I have to say it's actually um, pretty solid rewards, I have to say, compared to a lot of the other levels. You get something new each level, it's, it's uh, quite good. I was just surprised that leveling to 65 took less time than getting the mastery on a single ship. So I, I still think, um, I think the mastery is just broken right now, honestly. I, I think there's something going on there. I don't believe Cryptic would have nerfed it to that extent. Um, um, okay, so yeah, that's that covers the level 65 uh, grind that I went through now. Um, I was going to jump in here, but uh, I did want to mention one other thing. So uh, before I jumped into these episodes... Cryptic actually posted on their um, on the new on the official site. There was a, a blog a few days ago about what episodes of Deep Space Nine you should watch in order to prepare for these episodes. Um, so they went through a list of nine episodes uh, from Deep Space Nine uh, that you could watch to kind of prepare, you know, the background for where these. I'm assuming all of these six new episodes in the Gamma Quadrant will tie in to those. So I did actually go back and watch all of those episodes. Um, so I will try to bring in any knowledge from those as they go. They were actually really good episodes. I would recommend you do the same uh, if you want to get the full enjoyment. Um, I did like, uh, in particular, there was something I noticed, okay? Because there was a lot of comments in my uh, previous uh, video about which Wei Yun is actually, are we interacting with in these, in, you know, in this timeline now? because there were so many Weiyuns that died in Deep Space Nine. It was hard to keep track of, you know, what clone number he was on. And uh, going back and watching those episodes, I, I can now confidently say that, so it was actually Weiyun 6 that was the one that defected and uh, tried to uh, uh, get away with Odo from the Dominion. 
Um, but he, of course, died because he, uh, he um, self-destructed in order to save Odo. Um, then there was... Uh, Weyoun 7 came along. Weyoun 7 actually died uh, because Worf basically snapped his neck like instantly and uh, when he was being interrogated when he and Jadzia were captured by the Dominion. So uh, that was uh, Weyoun uh, 7. Then there was Weyoun 8. He lasted all the way until the last episode. And the last episode, which is What You Leave Behind, that was actually one of the episodes that yeah, Cryptic re recommended watching. And in that episode, Weyoun 8 also died. But to a phaser blast from, a, uh, I think it was Garrick that actually shot him. And uh, But there was something interesting. In that episode, it mentioned that Weyoun, that the, the female founder mentioned that that was the last Weyoun clone. So I'm not sure what they meant by that. Does that mean that there's no more? Does it just mean maybe in the Alpha Quadrant there was no more? Um... So in any case, if Weyoun is actually here, it has to at least be Weyoun 9, at a minimum. And we don't know if he's died since then, so at a minimum it's Weyoun 9, or it could be 10 or 11 or whatever. And it's pretty hilarious, because Weyoun's already on, like, his ninth or higher clone, and, like, Loris is only on, like, uh, her fourth clone. So, yeah, poor Weyoun, he's, uh, he's uh, been through the ringer. He's, <laughs> he's uh, yeah, he's bit the dust many times. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty funny. That was a good discussion on the previous video, so I wanted to talk about that. But um, otherwise, let's go ahead and get started with this episode. I'm very excited. I've heard good things. These episodes all seem to be getting good reviews from the community. I have been avoiding spoilers, but um, yeah, let's jump in here. All right, let's hail. Go to DS9 as soon as you can. Oh, yes. Um, I don't have anything for you at the... Let me... Um, I did actually accept the mission earlier. Yeah, I accepted it earlier because I wanted to transwarp to Deep Space Nine. So I'm just going to quickly drop it because I want to hear the intro again. I could use your help with something. All right, here we go. Let's see what Odo wants. Storm clouds gather. The Alliance has agreed to a summit meeting with us to discuss the return of the Herc and what can be done to prevent their aggression from devastating all four galactic quadrants. Despite recent events, they've agreed to host the summit at Deep Space Nine. I'm not surprised. None of the galactic powers are comfortable hosting a Dominion fleet deep within their territory. Yeah. Meet with me at DS9 prior to the beginning of the summit. I'd like to discuss our options. Ooh, we get some Ketrasol White. That's good because um, I'm getting low. I'm down to like three. I think they. I think it must be automatically using it because I haven't used that many. I think I started with twenty. I swear, guys, I'm not addicted. I'm not. I haven't used seventeen of these. It's just using it on its own. Um, and uh, we do get some re rewards here. So, so here's the thing, guys. I know a lot of people. Um, there were a few comments in my build video that I did about, you know, because I have access to a lot of account-wide reclaims, and, um, you know, I realized that a lot of people don't have access to that. I probably should have gone into more detail there and given some alternate options if you don't have access to all of these account unlocks. But, um, um, so yeah, I do apologize for that. I know a lot of people don't have access to that, and there were a lot of comments. But what I was going to say is that there are a lot of things, if you don't have access to these account reclaims, look through the missions. There are a lot of mission rewards that you can get that are excellent starter gear. Um, you could do, there's like the Nausicaan gear you can get, there's the you know Quantum Phase set you can get. There's a lot of good starter gear. And just looking at this one right here, you could get a set of Polaron Dual Cannons, Mark 12, uh, you know, Mark 12 Very Rares. So just rerun this mission and you could get yourself, you could get four of those and you could be well on your way to having a cannon scatter volley build, right? So that would be my suggestion. If you don't have all of these account unlocks, uh, go for missions, look for those missions. Um, there, are, there are a lot of good uh, space sets you can get for missions, weapons you can get from missions. You can replay them to get a full set. Um, so yeah, just wanted to mention that. 
uh, keep that in mind. I do recommend because, you know, they did, their weapons layout was not that great by default. They had like torpedoes and beams and everything mixed in here. You are going to want, even if you don't have like Mark 14 epics like I have, you don't have access to that. At least you can get yourself the same weapon just at, you know, at a Mark 12 very rare. So get, just get some Polarons up here, get some Polaron turrets in the back. You can also buy them off the exchange and then you'll have a pretty good, you know, very similar build to what I have here. So yep, just even doing this first mission, you can get a nice set, full set of Polaron dual cannons. But this thing looks new. So we got a core field mining plasma cutter. Um, it's got an exposed attack and so it's a plasma damage and an exposed attack, high energy sustained emission, beam AOE plasma damage. Hmm, might be a unique-ish kind of weapon. Not quite sure what it is. But we will accept the if mission. You'll excuse me. And I believe we have to... Let's just beam up here, and I think we have to enter from outside of Deep Space Nine to start the mission. Yeah, and again, thank you very much for all the comments, everyone. And... Um, there was a few people asking about my keybinds. Um, I will consider doing a keybind video in the future. Um, my keybinds are a little bit weird because I use a Razer Naga mouse and I don't know if most people use that. So um, I did kind of go into a little bit in that build video, um, but I'll consider about doing a keybinds uh, video in the future. And then also someone asked if I could post my builds to Reddit or somewhere. Um, I was thinking maybe I could post some of them to like Sto Academy and put a link to them. I'll, uh, if that would work, I, I'll probably go ahead and do that. But otherwise, maybe I do have to go all the way out to sector space, probably. There's a car fee right there. So there's the car fee carrier. Um, you can use that free token to get it. And it's actually a pretty decent um, ship for KDF side. It has those goofy uh, hangar pets. I don't remember what they're called. Here we go. All right, storm clouds gather, everyone. Let's go. I'm super excited. These The tutorial episode for the Gemidar was very good. So I have high hopes. Even though it wasn't much of an actual tutorial as in teaching you anything, but it was still, the plot was still good. Um, all right, so we've entered the Denarius belt. First, I'm... We've entered the Denarius belt. First, I'm reading several civilian... The Denarius belt. Hmm. The station is still damaged from the recent attacks. Is the Denarius Belt, is that where Deep Space Nine is? Am I crazy? And I don't remember that. I mean, I knew they were near the wormhole, but uh, okay. So I'm reading the uh, several civilian vessels on sensors. In addition to the flagship of the summit attendees, the station will is still damaged from recent attack. Okay, yep. So now that we're in the instanced mission, it's still, you can see there is damage. It's not repaired yet. Um, it appears that critical system repairs are complete. Their damage control teams must be working double shifts. So this, I guess, timeline-wise, this is pretty pretty soon after uh, Skila and Charybdis. All right, let's go. Please, we're low on fuel and supplies. We need help badly. Tell the ambassador that any Jem'Hadar aggression will be met with deadly force. Hey, I'm on the KDF side. I'm your friend. Hey, there's Port Askew. This is Station Control. Welcome to Deep Space Nine. Your docking clearance has been authorized. Several of our docking facilities were damaged in the recent conflict. Please proceed to the provided coordinates. Okay. Also, Captain Nog is waiting to meet with you on the promenade at your earliest convenience. Enjoy your stay here at the station. All right, let's go see Nog. Maybe we'll get him a jum jaw stick. Uh, an away team will be standing by when you attend the summit first. Are you ready to transport to the station? Not now. I want to look around. So yeah, they got the new Deep Space Nine exterior model here. Although this is the like destroyed version. Curious, what are these things up here? Like tractor beams trying to pull. Oh, is it like a little, it's like a little shuttle, okay. A worker bee, okay. It's a worker bee? That's not a worker bee, that's a uh, runabout over there. 
Okay, so yeah, they're trying to tractor the pieces back together, and I guess... And there's the Grand Nagus ship. Oh, and there's the Enterprise. Sean must be here. I think he was in Ops. Uh, I think I saw him in Ops. Um, okay, so that's what the outside of Deep Space Nine looks like. I just want to mention, I will be using the bug ship for this video, but um, probably for the remainder of the videos, I'll be uh, starting to work on leveling up my Vanguard ships to work on those mastery so I can unlock them for the rest of my account. So probably in some of the other episodes, I may be using some of the uh, Vanguard ships, maybe give you a, a little bit, uh, if, you know, if anyone's interested in purchasing those, we can uh, see what they're like. All right, let's dock. This is station control. Well, also... It's the same thing. All right, let's beam down. I got my uh, crew here. Yeah, you got strategic analysis. All right. Here we go. A full Jemadar crew beaming onto Hello. Deep Space Nine. I've been assigned to assist you here on the station. The leaders of the four major delegations have asked to meet with you prior to the summit meeting. Their offices are located here on the promenade. Very well, Captain. Whoa! Hey, Nog. So you just uh, came running up. Where's my uh, bridge officers? Speak with the faction leaders. So, yep, they're all over. So I guess apparently this is like the, hey, you get to tour the new Deep Space Nine mission. So they just put like faction leaders all over. So we have to like go to every every area of Deep Space Nine and look here, around. Coordinating security efforts. A founder. Should I like bow and kneel? It's important to win the hearts and minds here. Many of the summit attendees, particularly the Klingons, consider the Herc to be our problem and our problem alone. It's up to us to convince them otherwise. If we don't stand together, the Herc will ravage every civilization one by one throughout the galaxy. As you command, founder. I will slay the Herc. And Mayun's over here, but uh, can't interact. And there's uh, Dukan Rex. He was from the tutorial. Looks like uh, nobody in the brig today. Frankie must have been behaving themselves at the Dabo wheel. Um, Alright, so let's go over here. There's something... What is this? Maybe that's just the replicator. Admiral Quinn's office is behind those doors. Oh, interesting. What's Quinn doing here? You never leave ESD. And there's Sean. Okay. The results of this summit could have long-lasting effects. A number of our allies, especially the Klingons, consider the Herc to be a Dominion problem. The Federation sees this as a chance to improve relations with your people. Having allies in the Gamma Quadrant instead of enemies would be a great step toward galactic peace. Nah, pitiful humans. Don't need you around here. You weaklings. I only like the Klingons. They're only the ones that are worthy in the Alpha Quadrant. Here's some jump sticks. Hey, Nog, where'd you go? Here's some jump sticks. Here is Proconsul Deton's office. Oh, Deton, okay. And Abasex here. And Jarok, okay. This Where's the Lisette? This be difficult. While the Federation will see a path toward peace, I suspect the Klingons will feel the opposite. There is no love lost between them and your people, or the Herc for that matter. The Republic position is one of pragmatism. The Herc are a threat no one can ignore, regardless of what quadrant their home lies in. Ah, uh, yes. The Romulans, very priv pivotal in the Dominion War. There was uh, one of the episodes, I think it was um, in the Pale Moonlight? That was one of the episodes recommended by Cryptic to watch, and that was the episode about how they, uh, Cisco basically tricked. Jim Pock has an office here. Oh, Jim Pock, okay. And there's Kern, all right. Um, 
but yeah, how the uh, Cisco basically had tricked, um, had tricked, uh, basically compromised his own mor morals and ethics to uh, trick the Romulans into joining the war. Uh, he was working with Garrick to do that. That was actually a really good episode. That was the famous episode with the, it's a fake. That was a great episode. I highly recommend watching that one. I would not hope for aid from the Empire, Jim Hadar. Most of the High Council see the Herc purely as a Dominion problem. There are others, such as Martok, who see that position as dishonorable. If they want to fight the war of their ancestors, so be it. But they will be doing so without the Empire. The same could be said for our allies, should they side with you. Oh, Jimpok's not uh, hot on joining the war with the Herc. Maybe the Klingons have like cold feet because of their history with the Herc. But Martok seems to be eager to do it. You should listen to Martok, There are several Jimpok. Alpha Quadrant leaders here for the summit. Kai Kira of Bajor, Counselor Garrick of Cardassia, and my father, Ferengi Grand Nagus Rom. I recommend meeting with them as well. Their worlds will be on the front line if the Herc launch a full invasion into this quadrant. Yeah, that's right. So Kira is the Kai now. Wow, yeah, we'll have to talk to Kira. I wonder if she's going to have to wear that goofy headdress that the Kais wear. Um, Garak is a counselor. Hmm, I thought he'd be like the intelligence officer or something. He'll like reform the Obsidian Order or something. Um, and then, yeah, Rom was Grand Nagus, that's right. All right, so let's talk to some more people here. Garrick. Is this Garrick's clothier? Looks yeah. like Counselor Garrick is in his old tailor shop. Yep. Huh. His old tailor shop. Gulverette, huh? Yeah, female Cardassians are awesome. I was, I'm was i very tempted to make a female Cardassian on the Federation side. Um, I, I was one of my favorite characters in the original TNG series was Gala Set. She was in the uh, episode The Chase. We these dressing rooms are fun. Cloth physics. Um, she was in that episode, The Chase, with uh, she. It was a she was a really great character. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen The Chase of uh, TNG, that is an awesome, incredible episode. That was one where you learn about the uh, what were they called, like the progenitors or the uh, like the original race that kind of seeded the galaxy with their DNA. Um, all right, let's talk to Garrick. Hello there. I. Take it you're not here to update your ensemble, though if you'd like a few suggestions, I'd be happy to provide some. In the meantime, let's talk about serious business, shall we? I'm sure you'd like to know Cardassia's position on the Herc problem. It's simple, really. They're a menace, and one we should deal with swiftly. Okay. Surprised? <laughs> Don't be. Cardassia was recently attacked by the Herc. We'd have fared poorly without help from our neighbors. Even the Lucari and the Ferengi offered a hand. There's no love for the Dominion on Cardassia. But we know that we're next if you fall to the Herc. And so, we're ready to be good neighbors. Interesting. So they're willing to help, but it's Garrick, so how much can you actually trust him? But yeah, they've got to hate the Dominion. Like, in the last episode of uh, Deep Space Nine, the Dominion were, like, committing genocide against the Cardassians for turning their, you know, turning against them. So, yeah, there's got to be a lot of bad blood there. And one other interesting thing that people brought up also in the comments is that, you know, what is the status of the Breen? Are the Breen still in the Dominion? It wasn't really clear at the end of Deep Space Nine um, I mean, the Breen still seem to be in in good relations with with the Dominion, so I'm not sure like what happened uh, after that. Um, this used to be your store. Once upon a time, when I was but a tailor, that was before plain, simple Garrick became a member of the Detapa Council, of course, before the Reconstruction and the Iconian War and the Herc. While I'm proud of the work I've done for Cardassia over the years. There's a part of me that yearns to be here once more. 
To be just a tailor, just Garrick. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so he's on the Tatapa console, okay. Will there be anything else? Okay, nothing. So Cardassians are in. So it sounds like that right now basically the uh, Romulans are kind of neutral. The uh... My father is in my uncle's bar. Hard to believe he used to work there, huh? <laughs> so should we go to the bar? It looks like Kira is in the temple. I guess we'll go to the bar because that's what uh, Nog mentioned. Grand Nagus. Wait a minute. There's Lita and there's Hollow Lita. What the heck? I need to get my Mirror Universe Lita out. Then we can have like three Litas all together. <laughs> they should play Dabo or something. Um, but okay, so here's Rom and there's Morn over there. Hey, we can talk to him. Hey, Morn, how's it going? Morn. See? Yep. Yeah. You know that Morn guy? He never, he never shuts up. Just keeps talking. All right, so let's talk to. I was um, wondering when you'd come along. I'm guessing you're here to talk about the Herc and what we want to do about them. It's no secret that the Ferengi aren't a military powerhouse like the Klingons. Most of the time, we'd be happy to make a tidy profit from all of this and as far away from it as possible. That changed when the Herc attacked Ferenginar. Oh, Herc had been attacking everywhere, Cardassia, Ferenginar. We would have been wiped out without help. And we didn't get it from Starfleet or the Klingons. We got it from the Lucari and the Cardassians. Even a few not cool ships showed up to fight. That showed us that this is everyone's fight, big or small. So we're in. And if the 34th rule of acquisition comes into play, well... I don't remember the 34th rule of acquisition, so... So they got the help from the Lucari and the Cardassians helping the Ferengi, not Starfleet or the Klingons. Hmm. But yeah, they seem to be... Lucari and Cardassians seem to be more eager to help out. And I don't remember what the 34th rule of acquisition. Do I gotta Google this? How did you convince your people to join? It wasn't easy, believe me. I've managed to get the board of liquidators with us for now. Most of them see the potential for incredible profit. Alliance defense contracts can be very lucrative. The rest, well, let's just say their self-preservation instincts are strong. They'd rather fight with the Alliance than stand alone. The Herc have me thinking about adding a new rule of acquisition. If they can't be bought, get ready to fight! <laughs> okay. Yeah, the Board of Liquidators. I remember, uh... Yeah, I wonder if Liquidator Brunt will show up. All right, so seems appropriate where the Herc are concerned. Okay. Did you have another question? Nope. All right. All right, one more person to talk to. So look at the Frangi are in, the uh, Cardassians are in. Klingons don't want it. Um, I believe the Kai is here, in the Bajoran Temple. Yeah. And the Federation and. Uh, Romulans seem kind of neutral, maybe maybe receptive to joining. That's Kai Kira. Here's the orb. I still don't remember which orb of the prophets it is. I want to say it's it's not the orb of time, is it? Man, I can't remember. It's another thing I should have looked up. I don't remember which orb that is. Um, Okay, well, let's talk to Kira. She, her face looks a little bit off. Hello there. I, I'm a little surprised to see a Jemadar here. I figured Odo would have come himself to find out where Bajor stands. Huh? I can tell you we're worried. If you fall, the Herc will come here and we'll be the first to face them. So Bajor stands ready. We'll do what we can to stop them. Even if that means joining forces with the Dominion. That is correct. Our fight is yours as well. I wonder if uh, there'll be any kind of a little bit of reunion with uh, Odo and Kira. Hmm. Need to uh, rekindle that fire, maybe. There's something else I should mention. I've experienced visions recently, a sign from the prophets. 
I see a place I've been before, a world beyond the grip of death. It's the home of a former Kai, and it's in the Dominion. I should also mention that I've seen you in this vision as well. I believe we're going to take a journey together soon. Interesting. So she's had a vision of um, Kai... What was the other Kai's name? Opaka or something? Yeah, Kai Opaka was that first one. And um, yeah, that was one of the episodes that they wanted you to watch. Uh, I can't remember the name. I think it was Battle Lines. It, like she was left behind on that planet with that weird race that had uh, some sort of um, genetic engineering or, or uh, vi uh, microbe or something that would like keep bringing them back to life so they would never actually die and they would perpetually fight each other. So I wonder if that is what they're referring to here. All right, so what are your duties as Kai? As Kai, I'm obligated to serve the will of the prophets. Doing so leads me to many places, not just Bajor. That can be difficult, especially in times of war. There's been a lot of that in the last few years. First the Dominion, then the Klingons, the Iconians, and now the Herc. There are times... <laughs> when I wonder how Ben Sisko managed during the Dominion War, and he was the emissary. I've tried to follow his example whenever possible, but it's... it's been a challenge. Hmm. Okay. Something else on your mind? Not right now. Okay, so... The Alliance has asked a number of special consultants to attend the summit. I know each of them well, and I can vouch for their knowledge and skill. Even my Uncle Quark. Despite his reputation, his knowledge of the Gamma Quadrant is valuable. Just don't mention Latinum in the discussion, or the value of his information could rise considerably. Right. I wonder what the Dominion thinks about Latinum. Probably think it's like useless garbage. All right. Um, Got to talk to some more people. Lots of talking. So we got Quark. Oh, we get to talk to Lita now. And Bashir. Cool. All right, so yeah, getting to know all the cast here. Looks like it's kind of, yeah, this is basically the welcome back DS9 tour. Don't suppose you're here for a drink? How sweet? Double? Can't blame me for trying to find profit while I can. My fool of a brother, the Nagus, seems hell bent on getting the Ferengi into this mess. Not a lot of profit in fighting the Herc. 34th rule or not. You can't spend your money when you're dead. Is the 34th rule, is that the one that war is good for profit? And then like the 35th rule is peace is good for profit or something like that? I'll probably have to Google that here. Otherwise I'm going to go crazy. But they did a pretty good job on the Frangi uh, faces for sure. <laughs> they definitely got the uh, sharp teeth there. <laughs> All right. If you ask me, we'd be better off sealing that wormhole and saying goodbye to the Herc and the Dominion forever. I'd miss the Tulaberry wine, but I'd get over it. But seeing how that'll never happen. Especially as long as Kira is still breathing. And I suppose I'll have to dig in like everyone else. You know what the worst part of this mess is? Odo. He's back like a kind of ghost haunting me. I must be cursed. So I still want to steal the wormhole now. I hear you own a moon now. I do. And I'd be there, enjoying myself. If it weren't for the Grand Nagus. Brother or not, I wanted nothing to do with this until he put Lucari terraforming tech on the table. Couldn't pass that up. It'll cut biosphere renovation costs on my moon by 70%. Yep, just use Even pro with Odo here, and a billion Herc trying to demolish everything in sight, there's profit in the wind. 
might finally land that exclusive Tula Berry export contract I've been dreaming about for 40 years. Profit in the wind. Nice little uh, shout out there to the uh, reference to the uh, winter event. Is it the winter event? Where you keep saying that? The Ferengi and the uh, winter event area. Okay, assuming the Herc don't eat all of the Tula Berries. Can I get you something? Okay. So they still like their Tula Berry wine. Um, okay, I guess that's it for now. So that's cool, you get a little bit of background on what the characters have kind of been doing in the meantime. All right, let's talk to Lita. Hello. Oh, it's been a while since I've been in this place. I can't believe Quark still has that hollow me in here. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing, to be honest. I wish we were all here under better circumstances. Then again, DS9's always been a trouble magnet. <laughs> I guess peace is a little too much to ask for around here. That's funny, she referenced her hollow leader back there. My husband is risking a lot of capital, political and otherwise, by choosing to get involved with all of this. Fortunately, he's the best Grand Nagus to come around in a long time. The best ever, as far as I'm concerned, but <laughs> I'm pretty biased on that point. What about Grand Nagus Zek? He was awesome. That would be weird, though, seeing, like, a hollow hologram of yourself walking around. Look, if I were this mirror version of me I've been hearing so much about, I'd have a lot more tactical advice to offer. As it is, my advice to you is this. Take a look around. Think about all the civilians, the refugees, people who are depending on you to protect them. Think about the best way you can do that, if you can. That's what I'd do if I were in your shoes. Boots, whatever. All right. <laughs> so she also referenced the mirror uh, version of herself, so I wonder if there's going to be some uh, mirror universe shenanigans going on. Uh, mirror version? Yeah. In that alternate universe where good people are evil and vice versa, turns out the evil version of me is an admiral there. Real piece of work. Wears lots of leather, carries a whip. Oh. And she's in command of the evil Enterprise. I found out about her from my husband's information gathering specialists. Never hurts to be well informed, right? Rule of acquisition number seven. Keep your ears open and your eyes on the mark. Okay. Or rule 74. Knowledge equals profit. How would a Jemadar know uh, the rules of acquisition? Was there something else? No, that's it. Okay, so there's a whole dialogue about the mirror Lita that makes me very suspicious something's going to happen. Yep, something with the mirror universe. Because DS9 did experience the mirror universe quite a bit. There was the mirror Kira, the mirror Cisco. I mean, they, they went to that uh, universe several times uh, during, the, uh, during the series. And here's uh, Bashir. Okay, he's looking a little bit older there. He's got the beard going on. Nice to meet you. Dr. Julian Bashir, recently recommissioned Starfleet officer at your service. Can't say I was expecting to see a Jem Hadar here today. We're doing what we can to get things in order after that business with the Zenkethi and the Herc. The station took quite a beating. Worse than I saw during the Dominion War. We're still treating casualties and it looks like we'll be seeing more soon. A lot more. Okay, makes sense. Oh, there's no extra little questioning for him. The situation is compounded yeah, by the presence of civilians, both local and from other systems, even the Dominion. We have a number of refugees from the Gamma Quadrant on the station, and more are on the way. Clearly, the sooner we can solve the Herc dilemma, the better. We'll be beyond our capacity to help the refugees soon, as will Bajor. Recently recommissioned, you left Starfleet. Yeah, I was gonna. I was wondering about that. I mustered out some time ago to start a private practice on Trill. Since then. I've worked on special projects for Starfleet from time to time as a consultant. Even managed to start a family. <laughs> Needless to say, I wasn't initially thrilled with the idea of putting the uniform on again. Still, it's very hard to say no to Kai Kira and Captain Dax. 
And so here I am, back on the front of an interstellar conflict. Here's hoping it's a brief one. Captain Dax. Is it still Ezri Dax? Maybe? Question mark? Or is it a new Dax? That'd be cool if Ezri is a captain. And Kaikira, yep. Yeah. Um, I wonder if he like was working with those uh, other genetic engineered um, humans that were a little bit eccentric. <laughs> they were in a few episodes. Um, and he was trying to help them out with some, you know, psychological treatment. Uh, so I'm kind of curious if he went there, but who knows? An ideal outcome, but unlikely. Something on your mind. Okay. There's a number of refugee groups here on the promenade. Number of refugee groups, huh? Karaman refugee? Oh, God. Sounds familiar, but I don't remember all these race names. And a gamma refugee. Oh, right here. Are you surprised seeing Karemans here on a Federation station? That's how bad it is back home. We had to come to the Federation to find safe haven. There's nothing for us in the Dominion. Not anymore. That's right. Your gods abandoned us to the Herc and left us to fend for ourselves when the invasion got rough. It's no wonder there's talk about rebellion on Karema and many other worlds besides. They, care. they were, um, were they one of the races that the Ferengi were, like, negotiating with, um, for trade deals? They look familiar. And now, here you are, just like us, asking the Alliance for help. Don't be surprised if they refuse. People here still remember the war and what you, Jem'Hadar, did to this quadrant. You ask me? It'd be justice if they turned their backs on you, just like you did to us. Trust in the Founders, they will help you. You should smack her down for besmirching the name of the Founders. <laughs> it would not be good to complain about the Founders right in front of a Gemadar. It'd probably break your neck. We got a Gamma refugee. A Gemadar? Here? Where were you when we needed you most? When the Herc came, we sent distress calls. But no Gemadar came. The Founders didn't save us. Only a few of us managed to get away on ships before the hurt closed in. Yeah, well, the Founders don't really care about solids, so... It sucks to be you. Word of the Bajorans and their faith reached us after the war ended. There's stories about one of their spiritual leaders. She came to the worst of us, on our prison moon, to bring the wisdom of the Prophets. So, when the hurt came, we decided to come here, through the Celestial Temple to seek deliverance. If our old gods won't listen to us, perhaps Kai Kira and the Prophets will. Yeah, turning away from the Prophets is not wise, or the Founders is not wise. This is Jempok. The summit will begin soon. Send your report to me now. Okay. Hmm. The Federation and Romulan positions are predictable as always, but I am surprised by the Cardassians and Ferengi. They are usually more inclined to worry about their own skins first. I am not concerned about the refugees. Starfleet and the Bajorans will be all too eager to shelter and feed them, after all. As I said, the summit is about to start. Report to me there when you arrive. Yes, Chancellor. Okay, so yeah, we take the turbo lifts, there's Morn. Some people to talk to over here. I didn't talk to Kern and Adept, uh, Adepa. Is Adepa, is that Martok's wife? Something on your mind. I'm not fond of being gaped at like a dumbstruck tar. Who are you? I guess I will find out. I have many names. At the moment, I am Commander Adetpa. First officer of the Corps. In another life, I was Agent Kim of Klingon Intelligence. More recently, I was known as the Witch of Nimbus Three. I'm rather fond of that last one. It made children weigh, and grown men soil themselves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting. That's funny. She Kib is a ship, a uh, Klingon vessel, the, the Kib Intelligence Cruiser, and the Corps is another ship. That's the uh, 
tier six uh, bird of prey. Look now, can't you see I'm busy? <laughs> watch your tone. Or what exactly? You do not frighten me, and I can think of a dozen ways to kill you with my bare hands. If you're lucky, I'll use one of the three that are quick and relatively painless. Buzz away now, Globfly. Perhaps you can impress old Martok with your growls. Perhaps I can. Look now. Okay. How about you, Kern? I was once called Rodek, son of Nagra. It was a name given to me to prevent a great dishonor. With the aid of Martok, my name, my face, all have been restored. Good. The house of Moog has also been restored by Jimpak. My family once again stands proud with honor. I never did like that whole Rodak thing, like erasing him and giving him a new identity. He was always much cooler as uh, Commander Curran. Fight with honor, General. Okay. So we talked to pretty much everyone, except for this Dominion refugee over here. Nice to see some fighters around here. You're here to fight the Herc, aren't you? Someone has to. An Iridium before they eat everything in existence. Some of the other Gamma refugees will moan and groan about this part of space, but I like the Alpha Quadrant. The Bajorans are processing Iridium ore here again, and there's good, honest work for people willing to do it, like me. Most of the Bajorans won't go near the processing areas. Too many bad memories about how the Cardassians ran them. Yeah, yes. I remember that. That's good and well. Just means more work for me. Considering what I hear lately, I may not have a home to go back to in the Dominion, so I might as well make the most of things here, yeah? Yeah, the uh, Cardassians would, like, work Bajorans to death in the Uridium Mines on DS9, so... Kind of curious that he's here to talk to him. I wonder if there will be something related to the Uridium Mines on DS9 in a mission. Okay, I think that is enough chatting. Let's go on with the mission here. Let's head up to Ops. Okay, or the conference room. This is cool. This is the uh, main conference room in Deep Space Nine. This, uh, I think this is where they signed the treaty at the end of the war. Like in the last episode, I remember like all the top brass were sitting around this table and the female changeling signed the treaty. Oh, Kamarke is here. Okay. Anyone else? Kainira. I think I think they did uh all the faces so far looked pretty good except for maybe Kira's looked a little bit off. Kern's look or um Martok's look really good. Um Kern looked good. Garrick looks a little bit there's something weird. I don't know if it's the chin. Something's a little bit off on, on Garrick as well. But everyone else looks pretty good. Alright, let's talk to Odo. Anything else in here? What a surprise. Everyone's here and no one started shooting. Quite a commendable level of restraint. See if you can keep it that way. Take a moment to get settled. Speak with the others. Things will be serious soon enough. See, this is the thing. The Geminar would not be here. This would definitely be Avorta. Right? I mean, Geminar is not going to be in a little a diplomatic meeting. This is where the, the founders would be sending to Vorta to do this kind of work. Hint, hint, cryptic, we want to play Vorta. Okay, um... Alright, so I guess we talk to more people. Okay. I envy you, Jem'Hadar. You have had the honor of fighting the Herc to defend your home as a warrior born. Jem'Pak is not willing to face the truth. There are Klingons who fear the Herc, hiding behind politics and rules. Grethar waits for their worthless soul. <laughs> yeah, see, this is why I joined the KDF, because the uh, Geminar love the Klingons. They are the true warriors. Know this. There are still Klingons who know where their blades belong. We will not dishonor our ancestors and ignore the Herc. We will fight them to our dying breath in the name of Kalos and the Empire! As you say, Kapla. Yes, I'm starting to learn Klingon because I joined the KDF, so... Gotta know all the Klingon sayings. 
Let's see what Kamerke is up to. Hello. I have high hopes for this summit. Many worlds in this quadrant have been attacked by the Herc, including my own. We must all realize that without the Dominion, the Herc will wreak havoc throughout all quadrants, and we will all suffer. Indeed. I can't help but think that there's a path to a peaceful resolution in all of this. There's got to be some way to end this madness before more lives are lost. <laughs> I just imagine this Jemadar. Indeed, that's very interesting. I'm a Jemadar. Hello again. I spoke with Odo about the vision we discussed. He's agreed to clear a mission to the old sector. Opaka, the former Kai I mentioned, lives there now. Oh, okay, cool. Good to find out what happened to Kai Opaka after staying with that weird... It never really was explained why she wanted to stay there. Like, she had a vision or something, but, like, the prophets wanted her to stay there, but it'd be interesting to see if she actually accomplished anything. Does this involve your visions? I believe so, yes. The Kai has a condition that has prevented her from leaving until now. Odo has provided us with data that could lead to a cure. If there's a chance, I'm willing to take it. Her wisdom could help us all greatly. I realize this is a lot to take in. But I hope I can count on your help when the time comes. Oh, that's right. She did have a condition. It was like uh, she couldn't leave. Like, it was keeping her alive as well. Okay, so, and it was all part of the Prophet's will. So this is the Founder's will. I will go. And I think that is... I saw in one of the episodes, that might be the very next episode here, so that looks like Kaiopaka there, so they put a little bit of a spoiler in the image. Okay, Wayun. Give me my ah, light. Ah, the newly appointed first. I'm glad we had a moment to talk before the summit begins. That's all you Vorta are good for. Your Give me the light. Your report on the other attendees and their positions was appreciated by myself as well as the founder. I hope you realize the distinct honor that has been bestowed upon you. To speak directly to a god is a privilege, one seldom offered to a Jem'Hadar. I trust you will not abuse it. Yeah, I remember in some of the episodes of Deep Space Nine, Jem'Hadar would, like, talk about how the Founders were legends to them, like they've never seen a changeling. So it is pretty rare if for... If I can have oh. everyone's attention... Thank you. Let's begin the summit. We have a lot to discuss. Yeah, it's pretty rare for a Jem'Hadar to actually see a Founder. Thank you all for coming. By now, you should be aware of our tactical situation. The Dominion, as you know it, is on the verge of collapse. We've withdrawn to our core systems, and the lines are holding for now. Without your help, the Herc will win the War of Attrition. What about your outer systems? We're receiving refugees here, from those areas. We have one fleet left, Admiral. That's hardly enough to defend the entire Dominion. I'm failing to see how this concerns the Empire. The recent battle here is a sample of what the Herc can do. If you think they'll stop at the wormhole, you're sadly mistaken. Need I remind you that the Dominion came to your aid in the Iconian War? I seem to recall Klingons placing high value on debts of honor. Or has that changed? Mind your tongue, Changeling! <laughs> I will not be insulted! Oh crap. Wormhole. Let me guess some Herc. No. What is this? Wait a minute. Is that, uh... What ship was that? Whoa. Yeah, that's some hurt. Admiral Quinn to Ops. What's happening? We're under attack, Admiral. It's the Herc. Reading Herc boarding parties. Multiple decks. They've concentrated in the damaged pylon. Or processing area. The Herc are back. Get and to that damaged repair. pylon section and lock it down before the Herc trigger an explosion that could wreck the station. It will be done, Founder. Yes, Odo, I will do it. Ah, oh, the wormhole closed again. What were those other ships that came out right before, though? I didn't get a really good look at them. I 
All right, let's use our gambling device. So, yep, uh, that's another item you should uh, look into investing in if you're interested in doing uh, ground combat because the uh, gambling device gives you um, a, I believe it's 10% crit chance buff on the ground, which is very, very good, and crit severity and plus 15% dodge. You just have to use it, uh, click it a couple times until you get the you win uh, buff, which you can see up here lasts for an hour. It's kind of like, think of it as a triple that has a random chance of giving you a short little debuff. Um, if you get bad luck, it'll give you a little bit debuff, but you just wait a few seconds and you can do it again. Um, but usually you can get those for around like 10 to 12 million maybe around there. Um, they might come down a little bit, but uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, go okay, so we're going to the ore processing. I wonder if we will see what's going on here. Do I have my bridge officers? Yeah, okay. Alright guys. We are Jem'Hadar. We will destroy the Herc. Let's uh Interesting. Oh no, it must be one of these super buffed up Herc that we saw in the last... Uh... <laughs> Every time you see one of these, he's like, oh shit. <laughs> he did that last time too. Calling all of his friends. Yeah, that's a lot of guys. It's not even. Oh, they all went shrouded. Maybe I should do that. Yep, and I am using this um, um, corrosive plasma stun pistol. This was uh, given to Bad me news. by a the hangar viewer. security shield is on the verge of collapse. If it drops, you'll get pulled out into space. So let's make sure that doesn't happen. You need to stabilize the power relays and recalibrate the shields. There are consoles near your position you can use to do this. All right, no problem. Um, yeah, this was given to me by a viewer, so I appreciate that very much. That was really cool, so I wanted to use it in a video. And um, Corrosive Plasma is pretty fun. It has the uh, that cool orange, yellowy color to it, so it looks different than the regular Plasma. Um, so where are these consoles? I see a little green dot over here somewhere. Oh, is it above me? Okay. up the stairs. Whoa, okay. So I'm going to use the... Uh... Yep, I use the uh, crystalline entity, crystalline spike. It's like a grenade that you throw out and it grows into a crystal, but it keeps all of their aggro on the crystal. It takes a lot of damage and uh, heat off of you. And this buff here is from the um, one of my bridge officers. I gave them um, strategic analysis, which is a very, very, very nice buff. I'm probably gonna get the rank three, mark three version of the uh, that, put it on him. Gives you a damage resistance and an all damage buff and it has a really long duration. And it's uh, very nice. I ain't got that panel. Whoops, didn't mean to use that. Nice work, but it's not over yet. Okay, we the got the field moved up. into the ore processing area above your position. There's a lot of unstable uranium ore in there. If they damage it, it could ignite and set off a chain reaction that could destroy the pylon. 
You'll need to make your way up there to secure the area and restart the safety systems there. All right, so we gotta go further into the ore processing. Looks like it's further up. Oh, there is stairs over here, okay. This is a more vertical area, but it's pretty cool. And I like how when we completed it, the force field actually went up visually. That's kind of cool. Mm. Looks like the access system in this section was reset. You'll need to rotate the central column and extend the bridges in order to reach the next section. Okay. Rotate pillar. Oh, okay, cool. What does this one do? Oh, extend the walkways. All right. Nice. Throw the crystalline entity out here. You see, they're all going up to it. I also gave one of my officers Paradox Bomb, which you saw right there, kind of sucking in. It's like a gravity well, it sucks things in on the ground, although that perk seemed to be avoiding it. What is on me? Oh, it wore off. Is that some debuff from the, the Herc? Retract the walkways. Oh, okay, then we bring it up to here. Rotate pillar down. Hopefully it'll bring another doorway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Kind of an interesting little interactive map here. Almost in the clear. The safety systems for the area are currently offline. You'll need to restore power to that section and reinitialize the safety systems to get everything back online. Okay. Sounds pretty straightforward. These panels are cool. These actually look very much like the uh, Cardassian panels from the show. Of course, all my crew members are stuck down there like morons. The pathing seems to be as uh, terrible as always. All right, the safety systems are reinitializing. They should be up and running in a few minutes. Nice work. Hold on, I'm picking up multiple Herc life signs in your area. They're converging on your position. I need you to defend that section from the Herc until the system comes online again. If they get in before that happens, they could knock it offline again, or worse. All right, here we go. Wave defense mode activate. Okay, drop a crystalline spike, get their attention. Field is annoying. Let's get out of there. Ow. Wow, man, that was a lot of damage. They just like all clawed me at the same time. Of course, none of my bridge officers are here doing anything. Probably why I was getting wrecked. 
Okay, no heals, no shields, no support. for me again. And that's cold fusion flash there, one of my bridge officers does have that. Are you guys planning to do anything? Whoops. Lots of goodies over here. Spam F. Oh, look at this, he's like stuck behind the... He's like stuck behind the crates, what's going on over here? And who's, who's spawning all these Houdinis? Is this, um... Is that a Gemadar ability of some kind? I don't recall seeing that on the... Some, some ground ability or something? Okay, come on, you can do it. Let's interact. Okay, we did it. The Herc won't be getting, uh, getting in there anytime soon. Damage control teams are on the way. Very good. Oh, that was it. Okay. All right, so we got eliminated the Herc in the ore processing. Now what? The Herc are attacking the station and several civilian vessels in the system. I've sent ships to assist them, but I'm concerned our forces are spread too thin. I'd like you to work with those ships to protect the civilians while the rest of us defend the station. First Dukan Rex will accompany you as a combat escort. Ooh, he's in the uh, warship. Nice. That's probably the ship I'll be trying out next. As you command, Founder. Starfleet vessels. This is Quinn. Uh, mindless warrior Jemadar. Obey. That is a lot of freaking swarmers right there, man. Okay, I'm gonna use the uh, new vulnerability sweep on this guy. There it goes. And that gives a nice uh, debuff to their. Whoa! Yeah, he's got that weird. like a uh, tractor beam repulsor or something. Yeah, the new sensor sweep is really nice. It gives a uh, minus 25 all damage resistance rating to them, so a nice little uh, damage penetration there. Um, so we need to help civilian targets. So there's like three groups over here, so let's head... Warning. Ship is under attack. Click on there we go. Can scatter volley down all them swarmers. Ravager. save a vanguard warship all right there's dukan rex still flying around let's head over to this one Looks like uh, Dukan Rex took them out. Okay. Oh 
shooting at. All those nullifier things, okay. Oh, the Bortas is here, okay, Bortas Q. Greater there, okay. Alright, here come the swarmers. Oh my god, I'm not getting anywhere near that. Let's use a Bukari console and get the fuck out of there. Plotting the course for Pegasus. Yeah, that Lucari console is very nice. Now where are we going? Secure the system. Nice work, but I'm afraid there's bad news. We're picking up Herc vessels and they're heading our way. The station's weapon systems are offline. We need a few minutes to get them up and running. Until then, we're a sitting duck over here. I've asked every ship in the sector to regroup and prepare for battle. Let's hope it's enough. Indeed. Okay, preparing to engage. If they could get the station's weapons online, that would be quite helpful, though. Deep Space Nine was definitely a very formidable for a space station size. Once the you know, once they retrofitted all the. And destroy the herb. Concentrate fire on their capital ships. Yeah, so these assembly things. So I was playing the new Q. I wanted to play it a few times before doing a video on it so I could kind of learn the um, mechanics. And uh, indeed, these Necrid assembly, or, uh, assembly uh, ships have a weird immunity shield that shifts around them and covers certain types of I get out of here. Oh. Lucari Council is not up and heals did not cut it. It's too much damage. Hmm, no significant damage Systems recorded. Online in 60 seconds. The bug ship is very, very squishy. That is for sure. Don't let the frigate swarms get behind you. Yeah, good advice. Let's take out this rabbit here. Just a few more seconds. And the funny thing is, is that Beam Flare at Will is actually really good against the Herc, because it really lets you take out those swarmers even if they get uh, good hit behind you. See how the immunity shield is on like one side, so you have to maneuver around to get a clear shot on these assembly things. And they do that and they knock you away. And the shield shifts around a bit too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I got wrecked there. At least I took him out. Yeah, the bug ship is very, very squishy. That's the only downside. It is very fast, but... Uh, Target Deep Space Nine. Can I target the actual ship? Thank you. Deep Space Nine has like a weirdly huge hitbox or something. It wasn't letting me click on anything else. Of course, right as I hit DPRM, it goes immune on that side. Repulsor is very annoying. It's like right when you get into position for a good shot, they knock you away. Let's see any out of these NEMP assemblies we can take out of here.
Loot all the stuff, need to salvage. Oh, there's Enterprise over there, okay. How you doing, Sean? Now we got a few more left over here. Wow, they're 30 kilometers away. Why are they so far? We got a couple of these guys a little closer. See, it can be quite annoying. There we go. Yeah, that little shifting immunity shield on those guys is uh, quite annoying. I wonder if they can be sub-nuked away. If so, that would be a very good uh, role for uh, science. Hey, there's a CUV team. Is that correct? It's the uh, science dreadnought. Cardassian ship. That was the last of them. We're not picking up any Herc ships on long-range sensors. For now, at least. Hopefully it's clear to the Alliance that the Dominion is prepared to work with them to stop the enemy. Let's hope they're ready to do the right thing. Hmm. In the meantime, my fleet will do what it can to keep the Herc on our side of the wormhole. Remain vigilant. I will have new orders for you soon. Remember, victory is life. Victory is life. Glory to the Founders. I see Odo is using one of the uh, one of those uh, headsets. Ah, uh, yes, but uh, the Dominion Warship. Yep, I'm probably be giving that one a try uh, in the next episode. Pay close attention, recruit. I will only speak of this once. The severity of the Herc's attacks was surprising, but we should have been prepared. This is not the first time we have been forced to deal with him, after all. Yes. Agreed. For the first time, we require... allies. We must make it clear to the Alliance that the Herc threat is real. It could destroy us all. You're going to be tested. This will take more than being a good soldier. You'll need to be a diplomat, an ally, even a friend. Am I understood? Yes, honored elder. I wonder if maybe the Vanguard Jemadar have a little bit more, like, free will or self-determination because they were basically robots in the in the series. I mean, literally, I, the only. Uh, the only Geminar I can think of that it ended any um, like self determination was the one in uh, Hippocratic Oath episode, um, who was somehow genetic. He was like a genetic mutant of some kind that was not addicted to white. But um, every other Geminar, even that one Geminar they found as a child and it grew up, um, and they kind of tried to raise it, and Odo tried to, you know, instill some values in it. That didn't work. Um, he just, his programming immediately took over when he became an adult and he was, you know, a full Geminar. So, yeah, Geminar just don't have a lot going for them other than the, you know, other than being fierce warriors. They just are not very free thinking or creative type of uh, people. Okay, I understand Honored Elder. And that was it. All right, ready to depart. Let's depart the system. And yeah, final thoughts on this episode. So this was really good. Um, this was more like your scene setting type episode, right? I mean, we got to talk to all of the old... And let's go ahead and um, go into Deep Space Nine while I'm wrapping up here. But we got to talk to all of the old cast and crew. All the characters that have returned now for... Um, yeah, for Victory's life expansion. So that was really good. Um, that was obviously the bulk of the episode was just talking to all the characters... But it was nice. You got to see their new in-game models. It was kind of uh, a reunion after, not, you know, after not hearing their voices or playing these characters for, for many years. What was it? Twenty? Was it? 
is it 25th anniversary is that what it was 25th anniversary of deep space 9 that's that is freaking nuts man and yes i am old enough to have actually watched deep space 9 when it was you know on tv at the time in fact i was i'm old enough to have seen uh tng while it was on tv so um that gives you any hints how old i am um so yeah um but it was a good episode good introduction and we got to um yeah, it was good to see all of the old cast. A little bit of hints of some of the future plots coming up here. A lot of talk about Kaiopaka, so that looks like that will be the focus of the next um, the next episode. So curious to see what would happen there. And um, I'm also curious to see if there's uh, anything going on. Because you know, it was always a big part of the ep uh, series, Deep Space Nine, that the founders would be up to shenanigans where they would be replacing various leaders in all of the other factions. <laughs> this guy's awesome. <laughs> now that is a Gemidar right there, man. <laughs> uh, the character creation in this game is fantastic. Um, yeah. <laughs> you need to work out a little bit there, bro. <laughs> You're not looking up to the up to snuff for a Gemidar. But yeah, anyway, um, and this is a, pretty amusing as well, like this, uh, apparently, <laughs> as I was talking, the AI pathing is uh, not exactly great in this game, and there's like, this the AI seems to all clump into this one area in the middle of the uh, exchange. <laughs> so, uh, this is uh, quite hilarious. So if you want to have fun, just stand in the middle of them and then see how long it takes, you, takes them to push you out. So... That's a little game you can play. Um, anyway, as I was saying, I'm curious to see if the founders have been going around replacing any of the uh, leaders in the um, various factions. Because that was definitely something that happened quite a bit, and they used it to their advantage you know, throughout the series in many, many scenarios. They replaced a lot of like key high-ranking high admirals and things. And... Um, so I'm, I want to see if something like that is going on again. If any of these, uh, like if maybe if there's a, you know, one of the leaders doesn't want to join the alliance, you know, replace him with a changeling, and you know, all of a sudden they think uh, fighting the Herc is a great idea. Like maybe Jim Pak will be replaced by a changeling. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just speculating now, but that'd be cool if something like that happens. It would definitely be fitting with the uh, founders and their history, and you know what happened in the show. But yeah, it was a good episode, a good introduction, good tour of Deep Space Nine, talking to all the characters again. Um, the actual action in the episode, it was your pretty basic, uh, you know, fighting the Herc on the ground and then fighting them in space around the station. Um, pretty standard, but it was um, fun, a little bit of a challenge. I blew up a few times. The Herc uh, are unique enemies, and those new ground enemies I've only fought a couple times now, so I'm not quite used to dealing with them. They have quite a few different abilities. Um, Especially those more evolved Herc that run around, so... Um, and you can definitely get swarmed by those little ones, and they do quite a bit of damage. Um, but definitely, Cryptic, you need to work on your AI pathing, as is evidenced by this clump of <laughs> NPCs right here. But also just your bridge officers. You can see multiple times in that... Um, in that episode on the ground, in that ore processing plant, uh, my AI bridge officers were just getting stuck all over the place and were not helping at all which was uh, quite annoying, and I'm sure that was the cause of some of my deaths because I was not getting any heals or anything along those lines. But, um, okay, so yeah, but otherwise, I very, very much enjoyed the episode, and it makes me very excited to see what's going to happen now with the with the crew and all the uh, characters that have come back. Um, yeah, so yeah, great. Um, let's go ahead and hail and close out. Let's take the rewards and we'll close out with that. Um, that was unexpected, but I suspect it will show the Alliance just how real the Herc's threat is to all of us. After today, I'd like to think that letting the Herc destroy the Gamma Quadrant is not a viable option. For most of them, anyway. In the meantime, I have received a request from Kai Kira of Bejor. She's asked to lead a mission to the Ennis system, and I've approved it. She has also asked for your assistance. Provide it. And first, make sure she comes back safely. 
consider it your highest priority? Dismissed. Yeah, a little bit of a hint there from Odo. Still maybe has some feelings for Kira. Um, so, yep. So we're going to get... Uh, yeah, we're going to get some rewards. Get some white. I need some white here, man. I'm down to two left. And I'm going to go ahead and pick up this new core... Corfield, um, Corfeld Mining Plasma Cutter. So it kind of makes sense because we were in the ore processing plant. Maybe that's what that was used. Um, let's go ahead and equip it here just to, I'm curious to see what the weapon model looks like. Ooh, nice. So it has the assault weapon animations it looks like, but that is very cool looking uh, model on the weapon. I like it a lot. Check this out. I wonder what it looks like when it fires. Have to uh, pull out the sucker in the next um, next episode. Give it a give it a trial trial run. So I'm also it does have that weird secondary fire. I'm not sure what that actually is. Beam AOE plasma damage. It says sustained emission. Maybe it's like a, a continuous beam of some kind. Damage increased by 4% while per second while active. It sounds like it's almost like the mining laser from the Talaru, uh, that console where you can shoot a little mining laser that you, know, you can toggle it on and off. All right, so we'll give this thing a try in the next episode. But otherwise, uh, that is it for... Um, that is it for this episode, guys. We'll uh, continue on with the next episode, which is going to be Armistice. But uh, that is all. Thank you very much for watching, and that's it. Bye for now.